Okay, everybody. Um, so my name is Phil Jordan, as Paul said. Um, I have degrees in geography from University of Leeds and um, PhD here from Ulster University. Um, I've been here since 1995. Um, I've been a professor on the staff for 11 years, but there's something about being in a, a room full of teachers. It's like walking into a room full of kryptonite. <laughs> I don't know, jelly legs and dry mouth uh, from the very beginning. Um, okay, um, you guys have real presence, so uh, forgive me. So this talk um, is going to be split into five parts. Um, just a little bit of a reminder on the science, um, uh, uh, particularly the water balance equation. I want to talk about channel modifications and its um, specific uh, relevance in Northern Ireland. I want to just point to some online resources, very good resources. I promise you, if you go into these resources, you'll be hooked. Um, all the river networks that have got online water level recording devices in Northern Ireland and uh, the Republic. I want to also uh, spend a bit of time on the 22nd of August 2017 event, which was the major storm that came across uh, most of the north, um, Donegal and the north northwest um, a couple of years ago. And I guess also um, dwell on that and build on the idea of natural flood management. Um, one of the things that was uh, pointed out to me as a possible topic were the floods in the Somerset levels and what you know we might do about that in the future. And I guess there is an engineering solution to that, but there's a geography and environmental science solution to it. And I want to talk about that and provide you with some resources to take away um, that you can integrate into, into your curriculum. All right, um, this is the only bit of algebra, and it's, and it's fairly simple. It's the water balance equation, and if you think that um, all water on the planet, um, it doesn't leave the planet at all, it's not added to, fortunately, because the last time we had water added to the planet was when the last comet hit, okay? So any more water, then it's game over anyway. Um, so the water we have is going round and round in a hydrological cycle, and we can think of that equation on a planetary scale, or we can come right down onto a very local scale. And what it's saying is that in a year, all the pre precipitation that falls, um, whether that's rain, hail, or snow, um, can be accounted for by the component parts of the water balance. And that's river discharge, so runoff from the land back to the ocean, plus the water that goes back up to the atmosphere through evaporation or transpiration. So in a year, the equation is just those two things, three things, two things adding to, to precipitation. But within a year, subannually, we have to count for plus or minus, so gains or losses, in the change of storage. So water is stored in catchments, and it can be lost through drainage or added to through recharge from the rainfall. So precipitation, river discharge, evapotranspiration, and changes in catchment storage, and you know we can simplify that as being things like groundwater and soil water. And soil water is the big thing that affects our environment here. Now, there's the cartoon that explains all that, a bucket model, or in this case a bathtub model, where we've got precipitation adding to a store. Some of that is, is lost back to the atmosphere, and another component is lost in river discharge. And, you know, we can't manipulate this to any extent, not in the short term anyway. Um, we can do things about this through planting and lots of hard services. But in Northern Ireland, or in the Irish context as a whole, what we tend to do is manipulate the, the storage bit of it. And clearly, what the easiest thing to do, if we want to lose water from storage, let's think about soil water, is just to make more holes in the bath. Okay, and that takes that water level down. Um, so we're not adding or taking away from the amount of water that's going around this system. We're just manipulating component parts of it. So storage is a thing that we have most control over. Now, why do we think about manipulating storage in Northern Ireland? Well, I suppose the big thing, most of our land use is agriculture. It's grassland agriculture, actually. And we're constrained. We're constrained by high precipitation, 
high-ish, okay, low of apotranspiration. So if we get here in cold rain about 1,000 millimetres per year of rainfall, we might lose about 400 millimetres of that, and the rest, uh, through evaporation, evapotranspiration, the rest is available to river runoff. And we've got the potential for high soil water storage, so high S. And the reason for that is that most of our soils, if you know to buy green here, a glaze, so high clay content, high water table, and that's just because they're a, a, a relic soil from glaciation. High clay, uh, very impermeable. Okay, and the other next big soil type are peats, which also hang on to the water. So water likes to stay around on these soils, which constrains agriculture. Actually, the king of soils for agriculture or for gardening for anything are the brown earths, the yellow ones and they're in pretty short supply. So we can manipulate and take the water down from the surface of, the, uh, of, the, um, of those soils, those clay soils, by drainage, by manipulating S. Okay? Um, but to be able to do that, first of all, because we're not actually getting rid of the water, we're putting it somewhere else, we have to accommodate that water. We have to accommodate it by making channels um, deeper, what, uh, more wide and also straightening them to accommodate water that we take out of that soil storage. It's a simple concept. We take water out of storage, we have to put it somewhere, we have to manipulate the river geometry to take that water. And this is a map back from the 1970s and 80s showing the extent of those channel modifications, all in blue, uh, in Northern Ireland, and we can ex extend this down into the Republic as well. So, in fact, it's most of our channels have been modified. Um, only the very tips of certain channels here are left unmodified. And the principal reason for that, the principal reason for that, is to reduce water, soil water from agricultural land to dry it out a little bit to increase the chances for agricultural production. Okay? So we're moving water from one place to another. Okay, that all seems a good engineering solution. Um, so this is what we do. Once we've deepened those channels, we put in things like um, subsurface drainage, um, tile drains. We put them into ditches. This is a nice, clean-looking uh, cartoon. It's field drainage to edge of field drains reduces S. In that water balance equation, S becomes a smaller number. In reality, we've all seen that. Um, the yellow pipes going into fields into field edge ditches, field edge ditches, and then into rivers that have been modified to accommodate that drainage. Okay, so what happens to the, to the, the river channels? Well, if you think about fluvial environment, really, it's coming to some kind of quasi-equilibrium over 10,000 years. So that river there um, has been developing according to rainfall, evapotranspiration, whatever it might be, for 10,000 years, since the, since the ice left the landscape. This is the River Main, just south of, of Balamuni. This is the River Main, just south of Balamuni in the 1970s. Um, considered to be one of the best salmon fisheries, natural salmon fishers, <coughs> fisheries in Europe. Um, this was the River Main after channelization, and just keep these two trees for reference, and that's what it looks like. So there are the two trees. And we've deepened and widened and straightened the River Main to accommodate land drains. And we've effect effectively, overnight, more or less, uh, changed the whole dynamics of that river system. So water now is coming from the land from a reduced store. It's going into the river system because there's more water has to has to be accommodated. So the geometry changes. And what's happened there is the fissure has disappeared. So top of the food chain has disappeared, which means that everything else underneath has disappeared. So quite an ecological disaster, um, even though we've accommodated farmland that can be farmed. The irony of this is that the, the water that was put into the channel found another pinch point downstream, which was Balamina, an urban area which, you know, had developed over a, a good many years. And, and there were pinch points that had been developed there to accommodate that natural channel. All of a sudden, flooding occurred because water was building up. It couldn't get away fast enough. And actually, a flood barrage had to be built to hold back the flood 
and reflood the farmland that had been drained uh, to stop Ballymena from becoming inundated. Okay, so that's an interesting story of hard engineering to accommodate a flood in a channel that didn't quite work. And it's a classic example of taking water from, from one area, i.e. the farmland, uh, to grow food production, so we're using the, the, the landscape and the soil for that function, putting all the water back in the channel or into the channel and flooding out further downstream and creating a problem that has you know, far more economic consequences than the land uh, produces <laughs> upstream. Okay, so that's channel modification. Um, you know, there's a whole lecture topic we could talk about on that. It's a, it's a, it's a big subject. Um, I'm going to come back to it in a little while, but I just want you to take you, you to some, um, some uh, online resources. I'm going to let you uh, find this one, click on it. I'm assuming Paul Edwards got access to these slides and these resources. Um, but on the first one, this is from the, um, well, they used to be called the Rivers Agents, the Department for Infrastructure now. Um, and on their opening page, you'll see all these sites. Um, and they're sites where water level is monitored in real time and transferred to a database for us to look at. Now, not only can you see these data in real time, you can download a couple of days ago, five days ago, a month ago, years ago. You can see whole hydrographs. I'll tell you what, just for time, I'm not going to go into it. I'll let you play. They're very intuitive. Click into the first one, and there's reports, there's plots and graphs. And if, if you find it difficult to um, uh, navigate around, just email me, get in touch, and I'll talk you through it. But very intuitive. Um, I've just highlighted two stations here, one on the farm in Limabadi, another one on the van going through um, uh, Banbridge down here, that were impacted by uh, the 22nd of August storm event. Um, so the storm event came across this kind of direction. The remnants were down to the south here, but it was a terrific uh, event uh, in the context of, of the last several years. Let's just see if we've got something here. So the, the ban in Banbridge is the one on the top of the graph. It's not that intuitive, it should have been the other way around, but we can see the hydrograph. I've downloaded the hydrograph from the 1st of July to the end of September. And this is just water level showing the various peaks. And this is a really great resource if you're trying to put kind of uh, hydrograph dynamics into, it, into a class. We can look at the, the rising limbs, the falling limbs, the time to peak between rainfall, the number of storms in a year, return periods. All those things can be um, shown with these data. They're really great data. Um, and in fact, I used some of these data at the last class I gave. I was looking back through the notes, which was four years ago for this, this particular exercise. And we, we, we have that resource. But to the north, this is uh, in Number Valley, we're having a reasonable summer, and all of a sudden, the 22nd of August hits, and we had um, a six meter rise in water level. Now, this is not discharge, this is just water level. So, this is a terrific flood, and one of the most impacted of all the catchments around, uh, in Northern Ireland especially, was the Glenelly catchment um, that runs down to the Old Kalu <coughs> River. Um, near Plum Bridge. Um, now I've got a, a little film of this and I just want to show that this film is narrated and put together by one of our graduates, Art Niven, who's class of 2003, who's now, he was working for the LOX agency, he's now with Vera in Belfast. Now I just have to say, I take a moment to say that one of the most gratifying things that I find in my role is seeing our graduates in these positions, you know, not just immediately after, but they're happy ever after jobs. They're really doing the business. Um, and I try to meet up with people as often as I possibly can. Next week, I'm meeting with a student from the class of 2004, who's now the All-Ireland Environmental Resource Management Consultant um, down in Dublin, having spent some time in Belfast in Dublin, in Melbourne, and now back to Dublin. I've watched his career rise, and we've kept in touch year after year. Try to do that with as many people as I possibly can. They're solid, mortgage-paying, adding to society jobs, okay? And, and, it's, and it's a really gratifying thing to see. Now, the Glenelly is another salmon nursery river, very important. And Art put this, um, this film together. You can find this on YouTube. Um, 
following that event, so we can just have a look at that. <coughs> system in the northwest of Ireland and is a renowned salmon and sea trout fishery. It rises in the Sparrow Mountains and flows through a landscape created during the retreat of the last glaciation approximately 10,000 years ago. The rivers and streams meander through a rolling landscape with rich deposits of sand and gravels. The mid to upper reaches of the river catchment have a number of land uses including silage production, grazing and forestry. Open moorland and bog dominate the headwaters of the Glenelli catchment. The main channel of the river flows in an east-west direction through a diverse living landscape which has been managed for generations by the local community. Numerous mountain streams discharge into the river from the uplands to the northern side of the valley. It is these tributaries that provide essential spawning and nursery habitats for our native fish species and supporting ecosystems. On the 2nd of August 2017, a significant weather system passed over the Glenelli catchment, dumping approximately one month's average rainfall in one day. The direction the weather system moved over the catchment meant that upper sections of the river were unaffected, while a short distance downstream, large landslides inundated the river valley, depositing huge quantities of silt and rocks over farmland, blocking stream channels and bridges. The massive job of restoring farmland and river channels is ongoing, with careful consideration being given to the management of the natural environment. There is an increased probability that significant weather events like the August 2017 flood will happen more frequently with a greater potential for increased intensity of localised rainfall events. How do we ensure our landscapes are more resilient to future change? The local community, farmland, business, infrastructure and the natural environment all have been hugely impacted with many challenges remaining.
rivers and streams flow through your community, forming an integral part of our landscape, improving our understanding of catchment processes and how they can be impacted by change may provide opportunities to develop appropriate actions for consideration. The legacy of the August 2017 flood will be felt for a considerable time. Developing action at the catchment and landscape scale can be achieved through the development of active working partnerships with the community at its centre. Okay, so a couple of things to take out of that. Um, these events, they're, they're natural, but they're going to become more frequent. Climate change is upon us, and it's upon this next generation uh, more than any other generation. So there has to be, and this is the other word that are used in there, some resilience built into things. So in terms of the current models for the island of Ireland, we can expect about 20% more river flow in the future, but condensed into shorter periods of time, so floods like that, and about 60% less river flow in the summer, which has its own problems in terms of drought and dilution, pollution, uh, dil pollution, dilution, and so forth. So how do we become more resilient to these events in future? And that's a geographical environmental science solution. It's not about hard engineering rivers, because we know that doesn't necessarily work. It's about thinking about the landscape in a different way, and that is upon us as well. Post-Brexit agri-environmental policies for the UK, uh, there's talk of bringing these kind of uh, solutions into play in terms of uh, uh, farmer support. So natural flood management is another way um, of looking at the landscape. So thinking about the landscape, especially the agricultural landscape, as not just a place to grow food, but to have other functions as well, whether that's carbon sequestration to help with our climate targets, whether it's biodiversity, uh, protection, um, whether it's nutrient recycling to support other, other industries, um, indeed food production, but also water regulation. So we're thinking about landscapes in terms of water regulation as well. So the, the clear kind of immediate choice and maybe emotional choice whenever there's a, a flood like that is to hard engineer uh, ourselves uh, against that. So that might be a, a deepening of the river, a widening of the river, walls and so forth. That's not a sustainable solution. So I've just taken that, uh, I'm not going to read that out, but I've just uh, taken that from the SEPA report here, which you can find online. But the whole idea, and going right back to the beginning, to the water balance equation, is to attenuate water in the landscape to actually increase S. And that doesn't necessarily mean going back on what might have happened in the, in the past, in terms of blocking drains uh, that have been put in to, to increase food production, but thinking about S in a more creative way in the wider landscape. And I've just taken this uh, out of one of the reports which is um, on the resource on the last slide. And going from upstream right down to, to downstream, I mean, this is the geographical environmental science solution. But you can think about the need to have um, drained peatlands at the top when there's a sheep industry that's not producing money. Okay, so can those farmers be paid for some other function like water regulation? And on the, on the coal face of that, 
is blocking those, those drainage grips on peatland. Um, it might be targeted new native woodland, okay, to increase infiltration and increase evapotranspiration. It could be woody debris dams, so don't think that that water has to leave that landscape very quickly. Um, things like riverside woodland planting, interception of runoff pathways, grass strips, buffer strips and so forth, different kinds of soil management, riverbank buffer strips, <coughs> flood water storage. This is one that's used in Ireland quite more frequently uh, in, in recent years. Is to take scrapes away and think that those areas, they want to flood, they can flood, should we be compensating farmers for that instead of, you know, um, thinking this is a, a natural disaster and, and, and trying to mitigate, uh, trying to, you know, um, mitigate against that. So natural flood management is what I would suggest is, is, is going to grow in popularity. It's, it's now in, in Ireland. Uh, it's come across from the northeast of England. There are projects north and south of the border. You can Google those terms, natural flood management, and you'll find there's lots of initiatives going on. It's about increasing storage and not accommodating Q, river discharge, keeping the water in the land. Slowing the flow is the buzzword, slowing the flow. Taking those flood peaks down to a more manageable level and putting that water somewhere else. Okay, uh, that's more or less it. What I've done is I've provided some um, resources here from the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency. Um, there's UK government there. There's a different things about catchment-based approaches. Yorkshire Dales uh, National Park is doing a lot with uh, flood risk management, natural flood risk management, and the West Cumbria Rivers Trust. I've not put anything in there from Ireland specifically, but you can, you can Google that and you can find the same kind of deal. Um, okay, everybody, I'll leave it just there.